if you still survive and get born, you are born with a very small pancreas. You are born with a very small blood vessel. You are born with everything small. So, if such a person goes up to the age of about 30 and then goes to Dubai and starts eating meat four times a day and biryani ten times a day and payasam four times a day, this little pancreas says, my God, I can't, I can't you know, help you. So that fellow becomes a diabetic at the age of 25. Let me come to this disease called diabetes. Only yesterday, because somebody asked me to write something on diabetes because I said diabetes is the is this a week or something? Because there is a week for everything. Number 90. Huh? Number 90. Number 90, yes, yes. Because the, in the West, things happen only by this way. There is a father's day, there's a mother's day, there's the uncle's day, wife's day, husband's day, because only on that day they think of their father and mother. Whereas in India we think of them every day, so we don't have to have a special day. Anyway, now we are thinking of diabetes every day. So I thought, what shall I write? So I wrote an article called Autobiography of Diabetes. So diabetes is talking to you all. And read that, it will come, come in print in English. And also translate it to Kannada, it will come in various uh, journals. Now what I have said is, I am not bothering human beings. But human beings don't take their life very seriously. That's why they get into trouble. This is a very important thing. Diabetes is not a disease, but it is an abnormality of the whole human system. There is something going wrong. For which, partly we are responsible and partly probably our prarabdha is responsible. Very interesting. If you say, why does a man get a disease? Have you ever asked this question? Have you ever asked this question to yourself? If you say, how does a man get a disease? I can give you a discourse on every disease. How does a man get a heart attack? I know how does a man get a heart attack. And I think it's very simple. There is a pipe. It's like a toilet pipe which is blocked and I replace it, I am fine. No, that's not heart attack at all. Those blocks are not very important. Except commercially they are very important, but they are not very important. But this is a very important question is, why does a man get a disease? <laughs> Diabetes is the most important part of the capillary system. You can see all diabetics a problem, whether it is the eye or the kidney or the lung or the leg or the heart or the wherever it is. It is the capillaries that really are a problem. Even tightly controlled diabetics have more complications than not so tightly controlled diabetics also. For the simple reason that you are not controlling the healthy chaos. So the future studies must be based on Ayurvedic classifications and healthy chaos of individuals. I was telling you about controlling only sugar. Controlling sugar is necessary but along with the complete change in the system of a diabetic which can only come with a comprehensive lifestyle change. Most of us are born in poverty. Remember that. When we were in the, our mother's womb, our mothers didn't have good nutrition. So what happens is, if you still survive in the mother's womb, in the olden days, a lot of children used to die in the mother's womb. If you still survive and get born, you are born with a very small pancreas. You are born with a very small blood vessel. You are born with everything small. So, if such a person goes up to the age of about 30 and then goes to Dubai and starts eating meat four times a day and biryani ten times a day and payasam four times a day, this little pancreas says, my God, I can't, I can't you know, help you. So that fellow becomes a diabetic at the age of 25. Now we say diabetes is coming to eat us up. No, no, it's not coming. We are inviting it. Why? We have put our thrifty genes. Our genes are called thrifty genes. That is with very little food you can survive. But today what we eat is enough for 100 people. We eat so much. But if, if you don't want diabetes to kill Indians, you have to tell Indians to eat very less. <laughs> Lal Bahadur Shastri was the right person. He said eat one meal less because there are so many people not eating. I would say eat two meals less. But the remaining one meal, eat it four times or six times. In America, if you become a diabetic, you are given South Indian rice diet. And in India, if you become a diabetic, you are given chapati. So the wife will curse, e saavin chapati chapati That's not needed. What is needed is, we must eat depending on our genes. We should not eat too much. Second, we have become so sedentary now. When I was a young doctor, I have never seen a woman with the periarthritis or joint, with this, with that. No, because they had to grind the rice and grind with the other thing for making masala and then wash their clothes and draw water from the well. Beautiful exercise. 
None of them are diabetics. Today, you sit there, press one bell, chur, dosa is ready. And press another bell, water comes. And press another bell, it's washed. And it's also automatically ironed probably. So what do you do? Sit in front of the television or in the office. And in the office, what do you do? The boss is a tiger. Assistant is a tiger. Colleague is a tiger. We were in the forest. The cause of death was only predation and old age. Now predation is when you see a tiger, you would run. For that God made you have a special mechanism called the autonomic nervous system, which immediately released catecholamines, which comes to the liver, where there are gunny bags of sugar kept as glycogen, and it released. So when you see a tiger, your blood sugar goes up because you got to run. Today you see a tiger in the office. And you are not running because you can't run. So each time you see the boss, your blood sugar goes up. So every day it keeps going up, going up, going up. It remains there up. This is called psychological stress and sedentary living. That's what Ayurveda said. Taponalan. You thought doing tapas. No. Taponalan means not do nothing. And what happened? You eat so much and do nothing and blame the pancreas for diabetes. And then try to control the sugar because sugar is a very small part of it. I told you, David wrote, I have seen diabetics. I have seen human beings, I have seen sugar, I have seen blood, but I have not seen blood sugar. You have seen human beings, you have seen oil, have you seen cholesterol? Blood cholesterol? No. You have seen cholesterol, it's a white, tasteless, odorless substance. This cholesterol has killed so many people because cholesterol is not a disease, but you make it a disease. A recent French study showed of old people, those with the highest cholesterol lived the longest. But every day, everybody worries. Adrenal cholesterol, adrenal cholesterol, your blood pressure goes up, your blood sugar goes up, and you get a dice. So friends, we have to move in a different direction in India. We have to show the light to the West, saying that the science you are following is wrong, and the science followed in the ancient, ancient systems of Ayurveda, the holistic science of Ayurveda, is the right thing to follow. As a matter of fact, there is an awakening in the West. The British Medical Journal has asked me to write an editorial called how might Ayurveda help modern medicine? And for again, don't equate Ayurveda with herbal medicine. Ayurveda is not herbal medicine at all. Herbal medicine has come on to Ayurveda later on from Nati Vaidya. Herbal medicines are not Ayurveda. Ayurveda is Swasthasya Swastha Rakshitam. Preservation of health. Immune boosters. Ayurveda's biggest problem is Panchakarmas. You can rejuvenate the whole thing. You preserve it and if it by any chance goes down, you can rejuvenate it. What a fascinating thing. That is Ayurveda. Ayurveda is the greatest science known to mankind. Please preserve that. Don't get a BMS, BAMS and then go and give pencil injection and steroid tablets. You are killing Ayurveda. Remember that. You are killing Ayurveda. And don't you say that Ayurveda can treat cancer, AIDS, anything. Don't just boast. Don't defy yourself. That's what happened in modern medicine. We keep telling people, we will keep you all going here forever. So people have now disappointed. What have we done? We have sent a lot of people to meet their maker in heaven. <laughs> this doesn't happen. Ayurveda never boasted of those things. Ayurveda is system, but it is limitations. Now, for example, just now as I was coming here, a colleague of mine called and said, his son has fallen under the car. His, in his car, he went and hit a truck. And his head is all broken into pieces. And he has got... The brain coming out is unconscious. Sir, please do something. He thought I was in Mangalore to get the right people. Anyway, I, I have told him, I don't worry, we'll do the thing. Now, if you say, no, 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 I'll do panchakarma, he'll be all right tomorrow. No. Emergency treatment requires high-tech medicine. But that's only 5 to 10 percent. 90 percent of the sick people can make do with good Ayurvedic doctors. Now, don't you dabble in things which you can't. Know your limitations. I was telling naturopathy people one day. Somebody had some pain in their own student, had tummy ache. Okay? They're all, uspekai. Mud laga usko. Mud lagaya, lagaya, lagaya. This fellow had an appendicitis. It became an appendix abscess. It burst. It became peritonitis. Then he became unconscious. Then, dak sab kuch ki jega. You know, this fellow's burst, appendix has burst. So try to find out if there is an appendix burst, you say, I will do massaging there. I will do nice uh, pinda thaila and then massage it. What will happen? The, uh, the pus will come through the mouth when he is dead. So let us know our limitations. That is why I say complementary systems of medicine. We are evolving a new system where you have training in modern medicine as the basis. You have a good grounding in Ayurveda and you have a good splitting of Yunani, Siddha, 
homeopathy and everything because all these are good. Now what we have to do is take the wheat from the chaff and take the best wheat and put it together and make a chapati. That should be the future of Medicare system. And this is happening now. I am very happy that it is happening in America. You will be surprised. God willing, next month I have to give a talk in Johns Hopkins Medical School, one of the most prestigious medical schools in America, as to the role of complementary systems of medicine. Now it is mandatory for an American medical student to study six months of alternative medicines, of which till now Ayurveda was excluded. West excluded Ayurveda. They teach homeopathy, they teach acupuncture, they teach acupressure because we ourselves don't have respect for our own Ayurveda.